Unlike vehicles of the road, subway trains travel on a fixed track and cannot simply go around other vehicles when needed. Train movement is controlled by the signaling system and the tower controllers at transit control. The TTC currently uses the NXUR, or Entrance Exit System, similar to the one used by New York City Transit. Trains are routed by selecting a starting point and an ending point. Exit points that have a conflicting route or an occupying train will not be displayed to the tower controller. In order to select that exit, the tower would then have to determine the exact cause preventing it from displaying, making the appropriate adjustments. The entire subway system is divided into physical blocks. Only one train can occupy a block at any time, along with additional blocks of protection. This is known as a fixed block system. In this example, a train is occupying block 121. Signals 117, 119, and 121 all show a red aspect. This is accomplished with overlapping control lengths, known as overlapped distance control. The control lengths of both signals 117 and 119 extend into the occupied block 121. Out on the streets, a red light tells your vehicle to stop, a yellow to prepare to stop if safe to do so, or a green to proceed. A flashing green or an arrow indicates an advanced turn. For the signaling system used by subway trains, other details such as speed and routing must be conveyed to the operators. In a fixed rail system, because the vehicles cannot be maneuvered in directions other than set by the rails, speed becomes the focus of operating these vehicles. There are two main types of signals, interlocking or home signals and automatic signals. Automatic signals control trains based solely on the absence and presence of a train in any given block. If a block is occupied, the signal entering would indicate stop, a single red aspect. An amber aspect would indicate proceed with caution, the next signal is currently red. And finally, green would tell the operator that a minimum of two blocks ahead is clear. Interlocking signals are used in locations where train routing may conflict with one another, such as at switches and crossovers. These signals can be controlled by a tower controller in addition to train positioning. They prevent situations such as routing a train over a crossover while another train is still occupying it. Interlocking signals can be identified with the letter X followed by numbers on the signal. These signals contain two heads. The top head is identical to an automatic signal, indicating the status of the track ahead. The lower head indicates the routing. Green in the lower head indicates the train is set to proceed on the normal route. Amber in the bottom head indicates the train will proceed on the diverging route. Green over green indicates proceed at normal speed on the main line, the track ahead is clear. Interlocking signals without a diverging route would not have an amber aspect in its lower head at all. Speed limits and signal violations are strictly enforced by the signaling system. A train going over the speed limit will be tripped or forced into emergency by a T-shaped metal device known as a trip arm. These devices are located at track level beside each signal. The trip arm is in the up position when the signal is red and down when the signal is favorable. At terminus stations, trip arms known as blind trips are not attached to any signal and are only engaged when there is a train in the tail tracks. The blind trips will only go down if the train travels at a slow enough speed. Another type of signal is the grade time signal. These signals are used to enforce speed limits in sections with curves and grades. A lunar aspect indicates the upcoming block is under a grade time control. Once the train has spent a satisfactory amount of time in that section, the signal will clear or time out. Once this is about to happen, the signal will begin to flash and then change to a favorable signal, amber or green. If a train is traveling too fast, the signal will not clear in time, meaning the trip arm will still be in the up position, forcing the train into emergency. A grade time signal clears depending on the amount of time you are in the block, and therefore, the signal prior can never be a fully favorable aspect. An amber over green over lunar indicates the next signal is red due to grade timing over the main line. This effectively indicates to the operator that the next signal will clear if traveling at the appropriate speed. However, an amber over green without a lunar indicates the next signal is red. Proceed with caution and be prepared to stop. Station time signals are another type of signal that uses timers. 
These signals allow trains to close in on each other at stations if traveling at a slow enough speed. In this example, there is a train at the station in between signals 159 and 161. The control length of signal 155 would normally extend to signal 161. However, if signal 155 was a station time signal and approached at a slow enough speed by another train, the control length shortens to 159, allowing the incoming train to proceed one more block. There is still one block of protection between the incoming train and the train at the station. Even if the train violated signal 157, the train would be slow enough to be fully stopped by the trip arm prior to the station. In certain situations, operators may be instructed or permitted to pass a red signal. For example, a signal that is failing to clear due to a track down. A track down occurs when the system thinks a train is occupying a block when in reality there is no train. This could be caused by debris at track level, causing the track circuit to complete. Even then, operators would still need to obtain explicit permission from transit control to bypass the signal. There are three main ways to bypass a red signal. First of all, the operator may have to trip through the signal. In this case, the train would go into emergency after passing the signal and the operator would have to reset the brakes. Another method is to perform an automatic key buy. This is a special maneuver which lowers the trip arm if the train approaches it at an extremely slow speed. This can only be performed on automatic signals. For an interlocking signal, cooperation between the tower controller and operator is required to bypass a double red. The operator must also proceed with extreme caution and be prepared to stop in vision as the block could be occupied. The signal indication selected by the tower for this is known as a manual call-on. It can be identified with a steady amber under the double red. An automatic call-on can be given by the signaling system on the approach to a terminus station on the X18 if both platforms are occupied and the train is traveling at a slow enough speed. This can be identified with a flashing amber under the double red. This allows the train to move up to the crossover signal, the X16, and wait for one of the trains to clear the platform. In addition to following signals, subway operators are responsible for watching for workers at track level and adhering to slow orders set up on the line. A blue flashing light reminds operators that workers may be present and to sound the horn. Special procedures must be carried out whenever a train passes any workers. Speed limits for encountering possible workers are posted near curves due to the reduced visibility around these sections. All other reduced speed sections can be identified with yellow flags or amber lights at track level. On the walls of each station, colored shapes assist the operator and guard in properly spotting the train on the platform. The operator stopping the train and the guard controlling the doors are on opposite ends. Due to this, without a reference, it may be sometimes difficult to determine if all doors on the train are on the platform. A red circular disc indicates where the front of the train should be when properly spotted. An orange marker indicates the point where the guard should observe the platform until the train has left the station. Finally, a green marker indicates the location of the guard's car when properly spotted. For guarding, triangular markers are for use with the Toronto rocket trains and circular ones for all other types. This is because the guard is in the trailing car on a Toronto rocket train and the second from the trailing on the T1 and H6 trains used on the Bloor Danforth line. Throughout the system, wayside signs with the letters P, S, O, and 6 give the brake or power settings to be used in these areas. P stands for parallel or full power. S or series is used before a switch and other reduced speed areas, such as on tight turns and the approach to a terminus station. O stands for off power and tells the operator to maintain constant speed or set controller to the coast position. Finally, pairs of sixes are located at each station. The first six indicates where to begin brake application and the second where to stop the train.
Our journey has come to an end. We hope you have a better understanding of the signs and signals used wayside by the Toronto Transit Commission. We have arrived at Terminal Station. Thank you for joining us.